What's up guys, Tim Hustle with Drag Boss Garage. Guess where we are? Yeah, you know where we are. APD, Advanced Product Design, with the owner John Kyle. And we're back for what? Yeah, another car tuning series. So I'm glad you guys are here. I hope you've been following along with the channel and along with John's website so you can access this information when you need to. Because like I always say, knowledge is power. And that's what we're trying to bring to you. The more knowledge we can bring to you, the better your race program is going to be and your accommodation. So I had talked to John before about this topic and, and we'll spit it out there now just so we can get it out. Air bleeds. When I hear that word, I know nothing about air bleeds, John. I was always told as a, a tuner, so to speak, on carbs, don't mess with those. You don't need to tune them, blah, blah, blah. Um, you got to know what you're doing. You'll wreck your carburetor, all the, the, the stuff. I've never took one out. I don't know anything about them. I know there's a low speed and a high speed, at least in my experience with 4150s. Now, when I think about that, I always thought that it was associated with a circuit, like, like a low speed, high speed, that's a two circuit carburetor. And then if you had, the next one is like three circuit. I know dominators, I think are three circuit, or there may have been two, but the threes are high, low, and intermediate, I think. Now the, hey, I got one right. So the question is, and, and we had talked about this. What we want to do, guys, is present to you some basics right now on air bleeds. Because this topic is so extensive, to try to present it here in a 15 minute video is not going to happen. So this is the introductory video. We're going to kind of talk about the air bleeds, the location, whatever John's going to kind of present. Um, because like I said, I've never, I don't know anything about tuning them. Um, so I'm gonna give the floor to John. Thank right. you for allowing me to be here, John. Yeah, I, I think it's just important, this one we're gonna do a short video, just location of them, because there's a there's a large misconception depending on whose carburetor you have, um, you know, where the air bleeds are even placed. Uh, a two circuit's pretty standard. You got high and a low speed, but once you put the intermediate in, and the intermediate's more and more common today, especially in the 4500, most all your 4500 carburetors are, yeah. are three circuit at this point. Some people uh, have a preference, whether it be two or three. I'm one of those that it just fits the application. If you need a three circuit carb, you need three. If you need a two, two. One's not better than the other. That's like saying chocolate ice cream is better than vanilla. Some people think preference. that way, some people don't. Okay. Um, but they're, when you're talking a three circuit carburetor, they're not always in the same location. So I, I'm gonna walk up here to the camera because- now Are you talking we'll about the air bleeds? The air bleed location. Okay, yes. okay. They're not always in the same spot depending on the metering block and the manufacturer of the carburetor. Here, check it out, let's roll. Cause I mean, this is, guys have commented, John, they're very happy that you can show this stuff up close because a picture's worth a thousand words. Right. You wanna point yeah, at this? Like yeah, that's a So on your standard dominator, your idle bleed is the bleed furthest from the vent tube. So it's your third bleed over. Your intermediate bleed is the bleed that's right next to it. And your high speed bleed is the bleed closest to the vent tube. Now that, that's on a standard Holley carburetor metering block. Um, that, to my knowledge, that Holley has not come out with a reversed um, system yet. And the reason we come up with a reverse system is, it's a long explanation, but it, it allows us to make the metering block flow more fuel. The Holly block, when it had this layout, it had a tube in the main well for the yeah. intermediate circuit and it greatly restricted it. So probably BLP was the first one to do that years ago and then we, we adapted it shortly after. So since probably 15,000 serial number, maybe slightly before that, maybe 10,000 serial number, all of our carburetors have had the reverse. So now, this outside bleed is the intermediate bleed, and the next bleed is the idle bleed. And, and that's critical, you know, when you call us and you're trying to tune on your carburetor, if we have you changing the idle bleed and you're changing the wrong one, that's a problem. So, I mean, we, we try to inform people, obviously, when we're having them tune on their carburetor, but you need to make sure whoever whoever's carburetor you have, you need to ask that question, because a lot of carburetor modifiers may use metering blocks that I manufacture, they may use metering blocks BLP manufactures, some may be reversed, some may not. So it's critical when you're tuning on your carburetor, you consult the manufacturer who built the carburetor to find out the position of your bleeds. But the high speeds generally, it's always gonna be closest to the vent tube. So that one's a standard, it's just the two out here that you gotta be concerned with. And 
And like I said, there's really not a rule of thumb. It, it, it could be any way. All of our carburetors today are reversed. So your, your high idle intermediate on any of your APD carburetors, whether it's a 4150 or a 4500 style carburetor. So you know all the serialized numbers of when you made these changes. Yeah. So John, let me ask you this quick question, because you call them serialized. So the changes, obviously, you can record it in somewhere, you know, that 10,000 series has this change or whatever. Right. What is that? Is it 10,000 mean 10,000 carburetors? That, that's it. Roughly, and there's, there's probably several that we haven't numbered that's either just got out of here in a rush or maybe prototype stuff. Yeah. But, but yeah, the serial number is the number of carburetor. And, and after asking Randy, he thought it was maybe somewhere in the seven or eight thousands that we switched that style of metering block, and and we're on twenty-two to twenty-three, somewhere between twenty-two and twenty-three thousand today. Twenty-three thousand carburetors, carburetors you've made. Yes. <laughs> and uh, wow. the the numbers get bigger quicker. It used to be it took us a long time to get to ten thousand, but yeah. from ten thousand to twenty thousand didn't take nearly as long. You know, once you get out there, it's. Uh, I bet Overwhelming! You. I never thought I'd sell that many. Did you think? Do you think that Race Max Direct helps with that? Oh, I think it does. I, I think it's a whole Race Max in a, in essence is advanced product design over there. Um, I oh, mean, really? they, they don't really? okay. they don't manufacture over right. there, but they they can work on the carburetors. Okay. Um, and they're very passionate about it. You know, they're. I often say I used to have a guy working for me years ago named Jerry Dooley that came from Barry Grant. Yeah. And Jerry was the type that when you called him with a problem and you made a change, he expected you to call him back and tell him what that change did. Right. He didn't he didn't and if you didn't he'd call you. And George over there is a lot like that. A lot of times he's not waiting for the feedback, he's calling to get the feedback. Um, they're just very passionate about, you know, selling our product over there and and really kind of unique how it came about. But yeah, we really, we couldn't ask for a better supplier over there. Nice. And you know, it's a whole nother country. You know, it so is. It's like, you know, they, not that APD was completely unheard of, but it definitely wasn't a house name in Australia until, you know, they, they developed that over there. So they deserve a lot of credit for that. Well, thanks guys from Down Under, because they, they put me right up on the map too. You know, a lot of guys watch Drag Boss Garage in Australia, so I no, think they, 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 they definitely hungry for knowledge over there, and you know, they like the technology, and, and has been a great clientele. George might be a good guy to have on a live chat. Would kind be. of get his history and kind of yeah. see, you George know maybe is, get the lowdown on. He's been involved from way back in the you know front engine dragsters. He owned a chassis shop for a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's pretty involved in the racing world. You hook me up with him. Yeah, absolutely. perfect. Nice. All right, guys, so there's just a brief introduction on air bleeds. Like, like I said, this is, this is a topic that's going to be very extensive, so we're doing it in tidbits, you know, 10 minutes here or there, just enough to kind of move you in that direction and get that mode of thinking to move to that because it's, 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 there's a lot more thinking than it is putting in a jet or changing a cam. There's a lot of thinking. you got to know which bleed to change before you know why to change it. There it is. Like I said, you're always seeing and learning something new on Drag Boss Garage, APD, knowledge is power. So stay tuned for our next video in the carb tuning series. Thanks guys. Thanks.